We're just a few weeks away now from nearly all abortions becoming illegal here in the Hoosier State. An Indiana Supreme Court ruling that came down just last month allows the law to take effect on August 1st. Tonight, our Rachel Krause checks in with providers to break down what this means for Hoosier women. The decision is truly devastating. Dr. Caroline Rouse, a maternal fetal medicine physician at IU Health, says for months, providers have watched and waited to see what the Indiana Supreme Court would do as an injunction prevented the state's near total ban on abortion from taking effect. But now that the court has stricken down that injunction and sent the case back down for further action, that law is expected to take effect on August 1st. The exam room is no place for the legislature, and that's exactly where they have put themselves. Um, into a position where they are preventing physicians and patients from being able to have evidence based discussions about the best health care decision for that patient. Under the law, abortion clinics would lose their licenses, requiring the procedure only be done in hospital settings. And abortion would only be allowed in cases of rape or incest up to 10 weeks. Dr. Rao says that's before many women even know they're pregnant. People who have suffered sexual violence and um, been the victims of, of rape or incest are often the most vulnerable to these arbitrary time limitations. Um, they may not feel safe seeking care soon after the, uh, after the rape. They may not know how, they may not have the resources. If there's a lethal fetal anomaly or to protect the life of the mother, abortions would be allowed up to 20 weeks. But Dr. Rao says medicine isn't black or white and this guidance will make it very challenging to protect pregnant women. When I am put into the position of having to decide well, at this point, it's not life threatening enough, but then two days later, when the patient has become sicker and even closer to dying as a result of the pregnancy, then, then, and only then can we intervene and try and save that person's life. Most abortions in Indiana are performed in clinics with weeks to go before this law is expected to take effect. Appointments are filling up or full at many clinics. Planned Parenthood, the state's largest abortion provider, says they've reached capacity for abortion appointments and unable to schedule any more with this new law looming. At the end of the day, does this law help women who are pregnant? Absolutely not. And the court's ruling allowing this law to take effect really comes as a victory for the Republican supermajority who fought so hard to ban abortion, right? Yeah, it absolutely is. Roderick Bray, Indiana Senate, Senate President Pro Temp, sent over a statement earlier about the court's decision to allow the ban to move ahead, saying, quote, it was always our intent to draft, to draft a bill that could withstand a constitutional challenge. And I'm grateful to see Indiana Supreme Court recognize that the General Assembly has the constitutional authority to protect unborn life in the womb. But this isn't the end of legal Legal challenges. Another challenge to that law is being considered by the courts. This one arguing that the state's law and the state's abortion ban violates religious freedoms. All right, the story will continue to follow. Rachel Krauss, thanks.